Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Not A Pro Gardener here. We are in zone 6B. It's the second week in May. Now we're going to be getting our giant butternut squash in the ground, hopefully here in the next few minutes. There's a storm coming in and as you can see, everything's wet. It's been raining, but I think I got a little window to get these guys in here and getting them in before rain is something I really want to do. Now we're going to be planting our winter squash. It's about 70 degrees outside. Humid is all get out. It's been storming, got a little wet and it's muddy, about fell down, but that's okay. Now we're in the in-ground garden in the garage plot. We seed started these giant butternut squash and honey nut to baby them along to ensure we get good germination. And I wanted to have better control over seed starting them than just direct seed them and hoping they come up. First up will be our giant butternut squash. We will be transplanting them in the garage plot. We are going to be doing a different way of pre-plant fertilizer than what we normally do since it's raining and it's getting ready to rain. So since we talked about what we're going to be doing, we're going to show you over here exactly how we're going to do this to try to grow a giant butternut squash. So let's go over here. I'll show you and talk about it. All right. So as you can see here, it's been raining. Now we're gonna to try to get this guy in the hole, but this is what I was talking about. This is the heavy spot out here where the water likes to sit because, well, this garden plot here doesn't do the best for drainage because of the flat slope and the way it was graded. It kind of just ended up this way after you till it a few times. And it hasn't really been that big of a deal because I usually put heavy feeding crops in here and it's, really good for them because they just soak it up so where we're going to be planting this on the back side of this garage plot and i'm going to show you how i put these in the ground in case it starts raining again so we'll do this and then we'll talk about it these are the giant butternut squash the roots are finally reached the bottom they ain't been in here too long really they look pretty good this is the most vigorous growing one i have so it's going in the spot where i want it to be and we're going to put another one about four foot down and another row over here we're going to grow these down this way and train our vines to go this way and try to prune them to grow a big one here so i'm going to show you how i'm going to do this and then we'll talk Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something a little different here. So, as you can see, these are going to be giant, so they're gonna need more fertilizer and water. So instead of doing a slurry, since it's already raining, I'm just gonna take this flowable powder and sprinkle it around it. Pretty heavy. Try not to get it on the plant, not like it's gonna burn it. It's just I don't want it to be caked on there when it starts raining. And then we're going to use some compost. So we're just going to take some compost, dump it in a pile, and then I'll work it around it. And you're going to have to get your hands dirty at some point. So we're going to go ahead and get this guy covered up good. I'm doing this for the root system because this hard clay soil sometimes makes it hard for things to grow easily. So that's pretty much it how I want it to be. Just going to give it a little press down, try to keep the rain from washing it all away. And that's pretty much it. Trying to do everything I can for success. I'll make a little trench for that water to try to go around it so it doesn't wash everything away. And I'm hoping this guy takes off. The fact that these roots are not root wrapped around that pot, they're just now reaching the bottom since I took the pot off. It should have hardly any transplant shock, I'm hoping. So that one's good to go. Now we're going to work on this one real quick and then we'll just talk about it, the rest of it, just in case it starts raining. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put this other one here. This is the second most vigorous plant we have. If I don't fall down, if I do, it's okay to laugh.
I'm afraid it might damage the plant because it might pull it. So I'm just going to just take it off. everybody so we got them planted now the benefit to doing it like this is I'm using this water to my advantage is I have a drip line running here and a drip line running on this one here I do not have to use these drip lines unless it's like an emergency and it's too hot and it ain't rained in a week usually it holds water pretty good right here and that's pretty good for these plants because I'm sure they're gonna need more water than normal plants so as you can see the compost is gonna provide some fluffy soil for the roots and it'll help suppress any of those weeds that are popping up around them as well. So I'm probably gonna dress this with a little more compost around it. That way I don't have to hand weed around them as much. So just another little thing I'm trying. Not gonna say it's gonna work, but I'm trying to grow the biggest butternut squash and root competition for the water and food is Something I'm trying to avoid. So let's go ahead and go over here and we'll talk about it. All right, so we got them in. Let me fix you here. You're a little crooked. You okay? Okay, we're good. So we got them in, which is something I really wanted to do. If you see those two black spots, we just planted our giant butternut squash. I'll pop up an image of what they're supposed to be Days to maturity, I do not know that. Now, these giant butternut squash seeds are the offspring of the 2021 world record giant butternut squash. 83 pounds, 83.1 pounds. It was grown by Ryan Cook in West Virginia. Their YouTube channel is Heavenly Hills Homestead. Now, these guys are great. They're nice and friendly, and they know what they're doing when it comes to growing these giants. You should go check some of their videos out. Not only are these giant butternut squash huge, but they are great to eat. They store well, which makes, which makes this a great food source. Now, I don't know how many people could store probably 40 pound fruits on a shelf somewhere, but I'm hoping to grow these guys and then I'm gonna dice them up, chunk them up, and then I want to can them as a snack or as hopefully they stay tender enough to where I could use them as a mashed tater substitute. You know, baby would like it, kids like them, we like them, and I have a feeling this would be a huge home run for us to be able to get a jar, strain it out, or keep the juice for a broth for soup or something like that, and then we could just take the chunked up butternut squash, put them on a pan in the oven, roast them, brown sugar, you know, that'd be delicious dessert, really easy, really quick. And that's something I really want to strive to do this year. And if I can grow these, that's going to be a huge fun for us. And they are a great food source as well. And incredibly fun to grow. Each butternut squash, each giant butternut squash, can produce eight to nine fruits, averaging 40 pounds per fruit. That's over 300 pounds of groceries from one plant. They like plenty of room to sprawl and can easily occupy up to 150 square foot of space easy to grow. Now that's a description on what they say on the Lazy Dog Farm website where we got these. Now, as you can see, there's probably not 150 square foot over here and that's okay. I'm going to grow them with the space that I have left. I already planned my garden around all this other stuff. This is just an extra spot I had in case something popped up and I'm glad I had this extra space because I really wanted to grow. So for this giant butternut squash, it is a giant food source as well. So I'm probably going to take these and I'm probably gonna prune these to be the biggest and then those down at the at the house and those down at the house plot, that in-ground garden we got down there, I'm going to be probably growing those for food. I'm just gonna let them grow, you know, not prune anything 
and just kind of corral them to where they need to go, you know. That's pretty much it. I don't know. I mean, if something happens to these, I could still prune them and try to grow a bigger one down there. But I'm going to try to put some wire around these or something to try to prevent any damage or anything coming up and stepping on them, you know. I'm going to do my best to try to protect them. And along the way, we're going to learn how to do this probably together because I've never grown these before. So, since I'm not going to show you me transplanting these honey nuts down here, I'm just going to tell you what the variety is and we will pip in a little video of me transplanting them. So this is the honey nut butternut squash. It's 110 days to maturity. It's open pollinated. This later maturing plant, this is a later maturing plant. So plant early to achieve the best tan coloration. If stored green, the fruits can eventually ripen to tan in storage. Now the row spacing, we're planting them the row spacing where my drip, lo drip rows go, the drip lines, the row, they're gonna be five foot apart. If I'm not mistaken, I have five foot in between the tomatoes, five foot for that row of butternut squash, and then four foot in between the last, the edge of the, the edge of the garden plot. And then in the row spacing in between the plants, we're going to put them about four foot apart. So I'm still gonna have room left for a giant butternut squash on that other end of the plot, I think. It's kind of crowding it a little bit, but that's pretty much what I do here is I crowd things and I push the limits. Now for our honey butternut squash, we will put down a base planting fertilizer like we did before, like we did with this. I'll use the powder since it's raining. I don't want to drench it because it'll just wash away or get pushed down, you know, out and it'll just wash away. It won't be worth it. So we're just going to do the 777 powder for now. And then later on, whenever I get a chance, I will water them in with my watering can, like you see, with the Agro Thrive, the Micro Boost, and that uh, 777 again, just to give it that extra oomph. And I will do that for all these butternut squash. Now, I just won't be using as much as I did for these giants. I'll probably use one of them cups like you see me use before in a gallon. I, I put extra on these because these guys are going to need it. When them roots reach that circle of fertilizer I put around them, then that's kind of why I did it that way. I didn't want to pour it all in. I didn't want to. I didn't want to pour it all in one spot because then roots are just going to grow quick and they're going to get out there. And I want them all to be available for all the roots and not just right there at that root ball. I'm hoping that works better because I know how these things are probably going to go and they're going to grow so fast that I'm going to be. <clears throat> I want to be running to keep up with them. <laughs> so. In conclusion, the reason we are growing these giant butternut squash is for fun. For me and the kids, I'm going to have the fun of growing something new. I've never grown giant anything before, and this is going to be pretty cool and fun for me to explore. Now, the kids, they're going to come out here and see a giant fruit on this thing, and they're going to go nuts. Like, they're going to love it. So, the kids will thoroughly enjoy it, and I will love the experience. We will also be canning the fruits as well. We hope to store lots of fruit from both varieties. We love butternuts. We're especially looking forward to all of our veggies and fruits in the garden. We hope to keep you updated. Just ring that bell to get notified anytime I come out with a new video. Like the video if you like the video. Share to your friends if you want to see what happens next on this garden season. Now. Mm -hmm.